Hello, everybody. Um, I want to talk a bit about uh, restoring old devices, particularly ones where a rechargeable battery has given up the ghost and won't take a charge anymore. Um, it's probably quite a common problem for a lot of people in this day and age of uh, various types of rechargeable devices, such as Bluetooth speakers and music systems and other devices like that. Um, in particular, the device I'm talking about is well for this demonstration is the logitech mm50 uh, it's a very nice little ipod speaker dock uh of 2004 2005 vintage so it's um oh it's about uh, 11 or 12 years old now um it was originally bought by my mother-in-law in the states um and she noticed pretty quickly that the battery wouldn't take a charge well it did take a charge but it would be dead within an hour it just wasn't holding the charge at all uh and Logitech sent her a whole new unit, which is very nice of them. Um, and then we ended up with the old unit, which we've been powering off the mains. And then we forgot we had it, and it's gotten a bit beaten up. Um, but yeah, but this unit, the original unit, the battery just won't take a charge. Uh, apparently, this was quite a common problem with these units at the time. And if you dig around uh, web, various web forums, you will see people talking about the, the Logitech MM50 um, having battery issues and... Uh, for the people who were in warranty, uh, Logitech replaced the unit. For the people outside, outside, well, they were kind of out of luck because although Logitech did state that they would issue a replacement battery pack, they never did. So uh, I'm going to basically take it apart, have a look at what kind of battery it is, and hopefully uh, be able to get this uh, bad boy up and running again with a, with a be able to hold a charge so we can actually take it out and use it what it was intended for. Um, it's it's a very nice piece of kit actually to be honest with you. Which I believe, even though it's been beaten up a bit, um, or that you can see the power lead going in that we're using at the moment, but uh, even though it's been beaten up a bit, it still has good sound quality. It's a decent item. I believe it was a uh, two hundred or two hundred and fifty dollars. So obviously not something we're gonna just uh, give up and stop using because of a potentially cheap battery. So in the meantime, I'm actually gonna let's play some music. Henry Hall and the BBC Dance Orchestra just to show it working. Hopefully that won't get me into trouble with the copyright police. So there you go. Uh, I do have something of a love of the music from the 1930s and 40s, uh, the the sort of big band swing, the music of the time. Um, it's old music, hopefully it's out of, almost certainly out of copyright by now, so fingers crossed it won't cause me any problems. Um, <clears throat> I do have actually a large collection of old HMV gramophones, and maybe in a future video I'll actually show you what, what I have, because uh, I do like collecting old gramophones. But in the meantime, I'm all iPod based, as you can see. Um, so what we're going to do now is start to take this unit apart. Uh, I've already removed the screws because the, there's a lot of them and I'm sure you don't need to see someone's hands removing more screws again. Um, I am actually going to have to use a screwdriver to prise the thing open though, which is what I'm doing here. Uh, it was, it's got an, it's very well built this device. Um, like I say, there's a few knocks and bruises on it, but it's held its own. And here we go inside. Um, so, as you can see, the it's pretty well made. Um, there's two speakers on each side, one for each channel, so it's not cheap. Uh, most speakers like this would have uh, <clears throat> one lar a large bass speaker and, lar and a small tweeter. Uh, sorry, not even. You'd have one to cover both bass and uh, treble. But this actually splits it out into a bass and tweeter for each channel. The battery itself was actually attached into the back panel like this. Um, I'm actually, I actually removed the battery previously and took this black cover off uh, just to identify what battery I needed to get. Um, and this is what would throw people off. They would see the... 
<clears throat> yeah, this black sheaf um, just looks unusual. It looks like it's hiding something someone shouldn't be messing around with, but don't be afraid to open it up. Uh, as you can see inside, there's a battery which is known as an 18650. Um, oh, actually, I removed the sheaf just using a Stanley knife like that. So keep the blade short so you don't cut through the battery. Because uh, if you're dealing with lithium ions, lithium ion batteries, you really don't want to cut through them because you'll have a nasty chemical spillage or fire or steam coming out. It's just not, lithium ion batteries can be kind of nasty at times. But yeah, just remove the sheaf and inside you can see the battery, which is called an 18650 because it's 18 millimeters wide and 65 millimeters long. And attached to the side of this one, you can see a bit of circuitry. And this circuitry is a charge controller for a lithium ion battery. Oh, yes, having a quick look at the um, the details. Um, they're not, they're not, they weren't very clear, but it, basically what it says was uh, it's just GP1865, which is Gold Pro 18650 battery. And L220 is the that it's used that it has 2,200 milliamp hours. And there's a number below that, a code below that, but I suspect that's probably a batch code or a, ma or a manufacturing date code or something along those lines. Um, so what we're going to do is take this uh, battery and remove the charge controller from it and attach that to a new battery. Um, here you can see the charge controller. Uh, the, these caps at each end were just made of cardboard that were just glued on. They're very easy to peel back using a, a, a tip of a thin screwdriver. And looking at a bit more detail at the uh, way it's connected, it's soldered on, unfortunately. It would have been nice if they'd have used a epoxy resin or some kind of glue, which would have been easier, less risk of uh, breaking the metal and pulling it off. So I'm just going to pull the cap off the the cardboard cover off the other end, um, glued on well as you can see, and uh, we can see that's the positive end. So basically, the 18650 battery is an is an enlarged version of the AA battery or the AAA battery. The difference is it tends to have more specialized chemi chemistry. So it's not alkaline. There's a zinc chloride. You're more likely to find lithium uh, in these batteries. Now, I've already gone out and bought a replacement battery. I got this from uh, RS Radio Spares, which is um, a chain of electrical component suppliers in the UK, uh, fairly professional ones. Uh, it would be a bit like um, Mouser in the States or uh, Farnell in the U uh, another European country company. It was made by Samsung, and it's actually a 2600-hour amp battery, so uh, it should last a little bit longer. And... Uh, uh, they match up that's why i held them together just to make sure that the right size um that's also the biggest difference is it's pink and i don't mind pink batteries there's nothing wrong with that at all so what we're going to do now is um pull this charge controller off somehow hopefully i won't tear my fingers apart as i do it and that is what we're going to we're going to fit it onto the new battery So here we have it, uh, successfully removed. Uh, my fingers are intact. Uh, it's quite a delicate little piece of electronica, so uh, I'm going to be very careful with it, um, handling it. Now, to fit it on, I'm actually not going to solder it on. I'm actually just going to use insulation tape stretched over the ends. Um, the reason being, it means that uh, I'm not making a permanent connection. So if something goes wrong, I can disconnect it. Um, and also, if I ever need to replace the battery again, um, going through the process of removing this and then reattaching it if it was soldered on would probably be destructive. Um, I'm sure I can always get hold of 18650 batteries, but getting hold of these little charge controllers, I don't know. I don't know if I'd, uh, they'd be easily sourced. Um, so as I say, I'm going to play it safe. Make sure the tape's on nice and firm and I'm not interfering with the, the connecting lead. Uh, put a bit of masking tape on the other end as well, just to keep it all together. And there we go. I am aware of the fact that I do tend to sort of let my hands drift out of frame, which is 
my bad. I will try and improve for the future. But there we go. It's uh, it's it, it's ugly. it looks ugly, but it's functional. That's all I can say. Um, ugly but functional. Um, oh yes, and you're also probably wondering why my voice seems so detached from what my hands are doing. It's because the soundtrack on the original video was terrible. It was all crackly, and it was I had the microphone covered up on the camera, so I'm having to re-record as best I can. So I put away the Stanley knife so I don't do myself an injury. And oh, there it goes falling back into frame. And now I'm going to start putting this back into the <coughs> back plate. <coughs> Pardon me. The it was fitted in using a uh, as a plastic uh, sort of collar that holds it in place along the length of the battery and a couple of screws so it's quite easy to fit um, although one thing I didn't do and I would always recommend is if you are dismantling things you should really take pictures of stuff before you do any screws the problem there is with this collar there is there was actually potentially four ways it could go in um, believe it or not and I had to fiddle around to figure out which was the correct one but anyway in the end I got it and it um, the other ways that would screw down but then as you try to put the cover back on it wouldn't fit because the this collar wasn't in the right way so now we've got the, the screwed back in a uh, bit of a jump cut there what we're going to do now is attach it into the main the the main board using the the little lead in the molex collect the mini molex collector connector and um hopefully it will be good to go so we can give it a charge and uh, see what happens so I'm just putting it back together oh yeah so I'm just touching the Molex now Well, I'm having a little bit of a problem here, so I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll just skip ahead and show it to you fully reassembled. And here we are, all reassembled and working well enough. I've had it plugged in for about 24 hours to charge the battery up and also to do a smoke test and make sure nothing nasty happened. So far, so good. <clears throat> so, I'm just going to give it a quick test here. Uh, again, with some uh, old music to see what we get out. Here we go. Some 1930s music here because I want to make sure it's well and truly out of copyright and I don't get any copyright strikes. Um, so there you go. Like I say, fairly easy process to complete. Uh, if you have a device that has an unusual battery uh, or sealed up, just give open it up, have a look around. Uh, if the battery sealed in plastic, be, open it up. Be careful not to pierce the battery, but no. Look for product codes, size codes, whatever else. Type all the codes you can find into the internet. Uh, you'll you'll probably find pointers to what you're after. Um, and like I say, go visit your local specialist electrical store to see if they have battery in stock because you'll save a, a fair bit of money over buying the manufacturer's original. Um, actually, there's a case in point. There's a oh, there's a guy in England who's got a really good YouTube channel. He fixes old musical, in, uh, old electronic musical instruments, and it was a video went up a few weeks ago where someone uh, had to spend five hundred pounds on a new battery for a digital sound recorder, and he was given the old one and he opened it up and it turns out it was the it was literally one of these batteries had failed and he was able to replace it and save the cost of a 500 point battery so like i said give it a try you never know it's it's an, it's an experience you know, you'll save yourself a fortune honestly it'd be you'd be silly not to so what i'm going to do with this now is give it a bit of a clean up um and screw it up and put the screws back in because i didn't do that but that's enough to show you it all working there you go. Don't give up. You probably can get a replacement battery no matter how obscure it seems. Take care. Bye bye.